So see, they're completely parallel. And this time, it would be independent. So that means independent, independent, independent. That's the three types of examples. Now, we already figured out the x. Now our goal is to figure out the y, so we figure out the two coordinates. And that would be exactly one solution. <laughs> Dear viewers, today I'm going to show you about consistency, dependency, and solution. So first, let's take our example, and then I'll show you some graphs, and then I'll explain what these actually are, what consistency and dependency. Okay, so let's take our example. It's, one of them is minus 4x uh, plus y is equal to minus 7, let's say. And our another equation is that minus x plus y is equal to uh, minus 3. Okay, so this is two of our equations. Now, let's just simply graph it onto here. But for that, as you all know, we need the y-intercept form. So let's transform these into the y-intercept form. First, I'm going to work with this one. So I have to do that, then I'm going to keep y on this side, right? And then it is equals to, I'm going to take it that to that side. That means that we're going to add it to both sides, which means there's going to be 4x right here, and then minus 7. That's our y to set for, for this one. Now let's do it for our second equation too, okay? Here is going to be y is equal to, we're going to add our x to both sides, which means our x is going to go here, minus Three, right there. So these are our two y intercepts. So let's do the graph. Um, here, put that there. Now, our first equation, the y is minus seven when the x is zero. So that means that would be right here. And our slope is four. So that means one, and then one, two, three, four. So that's right there. Let me put one more. One, and then one, two, three, four. Wow, that's a good there. So then our slope would be, Something like this. I'm not gonna go any further, okay? It'd be something like that and continue on there. Now we're gonna do it for the second equation too. I'm gonna do that in red. So here it says that it's minus three, so that means minus three is right here, right? The y is minus three when the x is zero. And so then the, the, the one is the x means that the slope is actually one, because one x is actually x, which means that the slope is one which means that would go right here, and then it would go right there, and then it would go right there, like that, right? So then our slope would be something like that, right? So that means that, see, they are actually intersecting here, let me show you. They are actually intersecting at a point, and this is the point that they are actually intersecting at, right? So basically, uh, we just did the graph, and actually from this, we can say that it has exactly one solution because if it actually intersects then the, the one point and then it would actually be uh, one solution now i'm going to explain to you what the consistency dependency and the solutions are the consistency there are two parts and one part is the consistent the other one is the inconsistent consistent is basically when you multiply all the variables of an equation to figure out that it's actually the same thing to another equation like for example it's not going to happen here but if we could do it then like if we multiply this equation with any number and then we'd find that it'd be equal, equal there'd be the same exact thing to this equation. It's almost like that. And uh, the inconsistent, it's the complete opposite. So I hope you understand. Okay, so let me explain to you dependency. Um, dependency, there's two parts also, like the consistency. One is a dependent, another one is the independent. Now, um, we're gonna need the graph to explain you. Um, but the dependent, basically, I'm going to give you an example, like, oh, here, let's say that we have one equation and we figure out the line. The line uh, goes through something like this, okay? And the other equation, the other equation's line also goes through something like this, right? It's the exact same, it has the exact same uh, y values with x is zero, and it also has the same slope. So basically, this part, this time, it 
would be dependent because it is depending on one another. But the other two times, like this time, it wouldn't be uh, dependent. It wouldn't. It won't be dependent. It would be independent. And if it's also parallel, the lines are parallel like this, then it also be independent. Okay. And so if it was parallel to lines, then it would also be independent. Let me show you. So again, we have uh, two. We have um, two more equations, and then one of the line would look would look uh, something like this, right? And the other line would look something like like this. Here, let me draw it a little. Yeah, like that. Right. The other line would look something like that. So see, they're completely parallel, and this time it would be independent. So that means dependent, independent, independent. That's the three types of examples. So now I'm going to show you the show solutions. The solutions, there are actually three parts. Um, there's exactly one solution. There's infinitely many solutions. And mm, there's also another one that has that there's no solutions at all. So then for example, if we were to say that what type of solutions there are for these, uh, for this uh, the same exact line, for both of them, it would actually uh, be an infinitely many number of solutions. The parallel lines, it would be no solutions at all, and this um, would this one would be exactly one solution. Now I'm going to do the solution for uh, this um, this solution. So we already figured out this one, right? So then what we would do is that if y is equal to that and y is equal to that, we can just place the value of y, basically this, into there. So then what we would be actually there is that um, basically x minus 3, right, is equal to 4x minus 7. That's what actually would be. Now let's solve it. Uh, we can bring the... Uh, we can bring the... The, the numbers, so we can bring the variables this way and the numbers that way. So it'd be x minus 4x is equal to, that would be minus 7 right there, plus 3. And because of that, minus and plus makes minus, so it's going to be 3x and the greater sign is minus, is equal to minus and plus makes minus, so which uh, would it be um, 4 and the greater sign is minus. Then we can just uh, divide minus 3 from both sides, right? So then the, they would cross. So x is equal to 4 over 3 only because the minus would cancel out too. So it's 4 over 3. So we figured out the value of x. Now let's place it into one of our real equations. This is just the y intercept form. Uh, maybe we can place it into here. So then what we would do here, let me erase this. So oops, okay, let me erase up to here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place the value of x into our first real equation, right? So basically it would be minus 4, and then we put the x already as 4 over 3 here. And increase that too. Okay? And then what we would do is uh, we would do plus y is equals to minus 7. We already figured out the x. Now our goal is to figure out the y, so we figure out the two coordinates, and that would be exactly one solution. Okay, so in this case, it would be minus uh, 16 over 3 plus y is equal to minus 7. Okay, now let's take that uh, to that place. That would be y is equal to minus 7 plus 16 over 3. So then y is equal to uh, the, the, the LCM uh, would be a 3, and that would be minus uh, 21, and here that would be plus 16, it equals to, it would be minus 5 over 3, okay? So this, oh here, let me uh, write it correctly, here, that would be minus 5 over 3, okay? So that means that we figured out our y, which is minus well, 5 over 3, and our x, which is 4 over 3. Now we're going to put them all together. So that means that therefore our x and y values would it be uh, our x is 4 over 3 and our y is minus 5 over 3. Okay, so this is our solution. 
So dear viewers, I hope you all understood everything about this consistency, dependency, and solutions. And I hope you all understood uh, what I did by figuring out the solutions. And I also hope that you understood about the things in this graph. So thank you, Sam Ryan.